The secret of getting ahead is getting started. The secret of getting started is breaking your complex overwhelming tasks into small manageable tasks and then starting on the first one. Samuel Morris spent his life searching for the perfect note-taking system. From leather-bound journals to digital tablets and voice recordings, he tried them all, but none satisfied his instantiable desire for perfection. One day, he sat at his desk and he had an amazing eureka moment. Can his beloved text editor become the tool he was so desperately searching for? It's fast, versatile, available offline, easy to navigate, excels at text editing? Yep, Neovim. Did you ever think of it as the go-to note-taking app? Meet the Neor project where you'll find installation tips, ideas, tricks, and more. Its important bit is the wiki. The wiki is a highly organized set of documentation for all your note-taking needs. I keep going back to it over and over and I suggest that you do too if Neorg is on your radar. It lists all the core default modules, their documentation, different tips and tricks on how to use each of them, obviously the configuration parameters that you can add, and so much more. Here's the list of modules I'm currently testing, followed by a lazy run to install the plugin. Neorg is not a quick one to start. I don't think the number should deter you from using it, but it's worth mentioning. It's recommended to install TreeSitter support for the new file spec Norg. You'll need the GCC compiler for that, which, if you're on a Mac, there's a very high chance you're using an old one, in which case a quick brew upgrade should do that trick and then you can rerun the command. Let's go ahead and start a test.norg file. The first and foremost concept is the hierarchy of bullet points, or what you may know as title sizes from Markdown. These behave a little bit different and there's almost an infinite amount of indentation you can take one bullet. If a lower size bullet appears below a higher one, it belongs to it. It doesn't have to be a bullet, it can just be plain text, lists or everything that comes in below the title will belong to it. Starting a higher level bullet will auto indent it to its natural place in the structure. Another feature of the hierarchy is that it's all ready to be folded. This makes work very easy when editing large lists. ZF just folds everything, ZA toggles the fold back and forth, and this provides the interface to storing many notes in one file, if that's your style. There are many benefits to working like that, but this is a little bit out of scope right now, so I'll move on. One of the key concepts of any note-taking system is the ability to link notes to one another. This is not only good for organization, if you're following the Zettelkasten system, or getting things done, or para, all topics I recommend you Google, there's a high chance you'd want to create many types of links to help you easily find notes in a manner that makes sense not only based on hierarchy, but also based on context. Links in org files are enclosed in curly brackets. If a link points to a file, you surround it again with columns, but links can also point to a bullet point of any order in which case it will only be preceded by a hash. If you've just noticed, I linked to a non-existing file, and then by pressing enter, I was taken to a new file by that name that I started immediately editing. This is a nice little feature that helps a lot with the intuitiveness of the system. Here's an example for a bullet link, which as you can see, Neorg will do its best at interpreting the closest match to the name in your link. Since links are grayed out when presented, and the names are not always easy to read as text, especially not as part of a fluent text, you can do what is also familiar from Markdown and change the title link to any text you like, which will follow the link and enclosed in swear brackets. Once ready, it'll appear as a sort of a link you can click only by obviously pressing enter. Leader NN is short for new note and the small pop-up lets you input a name, which you can then start immediately editing. I personally prefer the linking method, but this is a cool feature to have wherever you are. Neorg has the concept of workspaces. These are configured in your plugin Lua config and then lets you run Neorg workspaces name to quickly open an index file for that workspace. This is useful if you have global notebooks that are not bound to a specific location like a code base project. An important visual component Neorg has is the concealer. This can be toggled on and off to show you the real interpretation behind visual representation of all Neorg fonts. Indenting bullets of any order will automatically change their representation. This is the equivalent of tab and shift tab in other editors. Another super useful concept is action lists. You can call them to-do lists, action items, whatever works for you. What these provide is a nice concept of having to-do items done, urgent, cancelled, recurring, and many, many, many more. A nice handy default mapping is leader TD, stands for to-do done, and leader TU, which stands for to-do undone. 
these can help you run the mapping instead of, you know, changing the characters themselves. Another nice thingy about lists is that they are smart. If a bullet title is marked as a to-do item and all of this subset list of items is completed, it will be marked as done. This also works vice versa. If you cancel one of the items, the topic changes to either pending or undone. You may have been wondering how we've gotten so far without ever talking about metadata. You know, timestamps, authors, categories, and everything else that makes a real note-taking system stick. Well, New York has a command for that as well. By running New York inject metadata, I get the metadata on top, which is surrounded by at document.meta and the at end sign. The description is something I can change for my benefit. I have timestamps for when the note was created, updated, and the version, if that makes sense. By adding categories, I make sure that later on, when we create a workspace index, my notes will be categorized based on these inputs. Lastly, before we move on, you can create with New York a table of context. That kind of creates a map of a given note, especially for large documents, it creates a map of links that help you navigate through any set of notes within a given file. In many cases, it makes sense to just create project-related notes rather than a full-blown workspace. Kind of like Markdown dedicated files or the wiki part of a Git repo, if you're familiar with that. In this case, I work by convention, creating the notes tier and adding an index.norg file. These can be added to the git ignore or better yet committed into the repo and then integrated into your source control workflow. If the situation allows it, that's what I try to do. Once ready or occasionally run the generate workspace summary command to create categorized lists of linked notes. I'm using the index file, but it's basically available to you anywhere. One mode I'm adding here and I tend to use daily is the journal. Journaling is a great thing to do if this is a habit you're trying to build or maintain. Essentially, what New York does is to provide you with an interface to tap into daily and to write a note in a journal, which will then be held under a directory structure of year slash month slash day. You can also add entries for yesterday or tomorrow to reduce the friction of moving files around. This may be great for reminders, meeting notes, or anything that's strongly bound with the date it's taken. You can kind of get the same result, at least for the date-based stuff with metadata, but having a structure that's based on dates makes the process of locating a piece of information far more easier. If you head over to Neorg specs, you can find a robust and complete Neorg spec that lays out the full list of options. This video is way too short to cover it, and I doubt that anyone will sit and actually skim through the entire thing, but rest assured almost anything you're trying to build, as far as notes go, is packed in there. Quotes, separators, obviously underlining, bolding, or writing italic text, as well as endless indented nested list items, numbered lists come with the same functionality, which is actually even cooler visibly. Quotes can also be nested, as you can see. Additionally, if you're writing an essay or something that requires footnotes, New York got you covered. There are a few kinds of them, single or multi-line, and they're marked so that you can easily separate and find them. A highly sought after feature of engineering notes is the highlighted syntax code snippets. New York handles these with the code tag, at tag, and the supported language name. Most of them, they're already supported, I can tell you that. Over to the exporter. Generally speaking, there's no need to explicitly configure Markdown, but just add the export module to the New York configuration. Once ready, the export command will be available to you through colon New York, and it goes like so. New York, export, then you add to file to create a single file, and the name of the file. If you add .md, the file format will be auto-interpreted as Markdown, so you don't have to do anything. And there it is, the exported Markdown file is now on the right-hand side, which you can then use to your liking, whether as a Markdown server, on another note-taking app, a Git repo, etc. There are additional exporters that I won't cover here, but definitely check them out over at the New York Wiki. So as you can see, New York is packed with goodies. It's already integrated into my daily routine of note-taking. I'm gonna expand on that maybe in a future video, but I love the way that it integrates with NeoVim and the fact that it allows me to write my notes as any other text that I do on my daily routine within NeoVim is just a game changer for me. There's one point, however, where specifically Obsidian takes the precedence here, the ability to edit things through the mobile device. 
having something this close to my fingertips daily, even if I'm not at my desk and I want to register something that I've just listened to on a podcast, on an audiobook, or just read, having that through the mobile phone takes the entire thing to the next level. I'm still kind of fighting my way through understanding how I can achieve the same with New York because I really, really like the structure and the idea of how it works and integrates with my offline structure and everything you've seen in this video. If I find something relevant, I'll update. Lastly, if you still don't understand why I'm so keen on writing every text I can within of him and why I like it so much, especially the text editing abilities of it, please catch the uh, list of Neovim videos I already have in my channel. And thank you for watching this far and I will see you on the next video.